ancient proverbs, and that phrase is that clothes make the man. Or the woman. And if that's true, then the success of some San Antonians may be due to the hard work of just a few people. They stay up all night long to make sure that your clothes look good. In this week's While You Were Sleeping, Katrina Weber takes us into the heart of one longtime local dry cleaning company. It's laundry day for Kirsten Thomas, but then again, every day is. The first of dozens of loads goes in shortly after 2 a.m. The time the self-described morning person arrives to work at Cowboy Cleaners. It just, I don't know, comes natural, I guess, but I take a nap in the afternoons. Before the sun is out, she's taking clothes out of the huge washers and dryers inside this building on the city's north side. Her job involves doing everyone's laundry, like a mom of sorts to customers from six stores. I'm more like the big sister. There's other people that are more like the mom. <laughs> Cowboy Cleaners itself is family owned, an environmentally conscious San Antonio staple for more than 40 years. As the name implies, dry cleaning also is a big part of what they do. It's garment by garment day by day. In George Andrews case, it's actually overnight by overnight. When he arrives after 3 a.m., his work is piled up already. Still, he handles each item for dry cleaning. I'm going to hang that aside as if it's the only one. It's our goal to make them look as close to brand new as possible that very same day. At an hour while most eyes are closed, they both have to keep theirs trained for any unsightly messes and make them disappear. While keeping an eye out for stains is part of the job, it's some of the other things that they find among the clothes that often comes as a surprise. Credit cards, driver's licenses, um, pocket knives. Lipsticks, you know, we found money. We, if, if you have it in your pocket, over a course of time, we found it. Both of these longtime employees say they've also found their dream jobs here doing them while others are in dreamland. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. I bet they have found some interesting stuff in people's pockets. And we're like their best customers yeah. in this job. We're constantly at the dry cleaners. We well, you know a couple of people are always looking pretty sharp. Mike and Fiona always look good. Oh, yeah. So that. check out what we've got right yeah. here. It's a Longhorn cattle takeover here in Market Square. Yeah, you're going to see them on Saturday, but we are getting a first look here. Dr. Scott Kimball is joining us today. And these are good old Texas Longhorns, right? Originally from Texas. Texas Longhorn, yes. Yeah. But not from Texas? No. Where are they from? Originally they came, their bloodline came from um, Africa. And then how'd they get here? Uh, they got transformed from Africa into Spain and Christopher Columbus brought them across to Santa Domingo back in the 1400s. All right, and then Mexico and then all the way up. Then and from Mexico, then they propagated up this way. And the rest they say is history. We're gonna be talking about this and <laughs> talking about the big yeah, yeah, well, we got to work it. this week. <laughs> <laughs> Having trouble over there, huh, McKenna? <laughs> all right, well, as we count down to Sunday's showdown, listen to this giveaway. We have got an autographed Drew Brees jersey, and we're gonna tell you how you have a chance to win it. Yes, and how you can enjoy the game day grub because you know there is always so much food to enjoy on game day, but how wings you can stick to your diet too. Oh, things you can do geez. before you head to that party. More wings, not that kind of stuff. And hey, Coyote Peterson, biggest alligator snapping turtle in Texas was found by this gentleman. We're gonna be talking with him. That's all on SA Live. An actor known for his roles in some iconic 80s movies is going to be in shirts today. You can catch Anthony Michael Hall at a screening for the movie The Breakfast Club. That screening is happening at the Evo Entertainment at 6.30 this evening. Hall will do a Q&A after the movie. I forgot that he was in that. And wow, he's making yeah. an appearance at another Texas theater on Friday. You can get all the details right now on KSET.com. And you can find this story in our trending section. So Wasn't he on Saturday Night Live, too? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. What? I don't know. For a minute. Is that a picture from the movie way so. back then, or is that a current picture? Ah, uh because -huh. he hadn't changed much of this current. No, picture. that's be not a current. That's from right. back then. Yeah. I just I think he was like 16 years. Remember yeah. 16 Candles? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of stole the show. <laughs>
All right, let's take a look at the forecast. Uh, we're up to 50 degrees now, 52 this afternoon. Slight chance for shower, but most of us staying dry, just cloudy. More sun tomorrow. It does warm up over the weekend. And some warm temperatures next week before our next big front arrives. All right. Thank you, Justin. And thank you for joining us. Well, a little word about Mike and Fiona down there with those horns. <laughs> they have to be very careful because yeah, if the long right, horns, so. you know, we'll see how saw a doing. squirrel, you know. Whoop. And we'll see. And we'll see how they're doing right now. Oh, forget the tacos. We're talking over the top burritos where you can find these traditional Mexican recipes here in town. Cheers to Friday Eve. On this Thirsty Thursday, take a sip around the world. These cocktails go down internationally smooth. And counting down to the Vaquero cook-off, we're cooking with two sisters that are competing for the best charro beans. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Well, happy Thursday, everybody, <laughs> and it is a Longhorn takeover here in Market Square as we celebrate our historic Texas roots and count down to the Western Heritage Weekend. Yes, good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorstiza. And I'm Mike Osterhage. Well, you know it's rodeo time when the Longhorns make their way through downtown like they're going to do, of course, this weekend. And these are a couple of familiar faces, <laughs> as well as their handlers, Dr. <laughs> Scott Kimball and McKenna Kimball from Kimball Cattle here to give us a, a close-up look. and. I, it doesn't get any more iconic than this Longhorn, right? Yes. Yes, but, she is. Now, what's interesting is these two look a little bit different. Yes. There's, so there's different kind of breeds Di of Longhorns? Different bloodlines. Okay. And I'll try to make it short and simple. Is that Longhorns are the only bovine stock or cattle stock that are, that are breed from African stock and then the European, just like humans are. There's differences in our hair color and our body style and and our girth and our longer for our faces because it's a bloodline that was a mix. That's what gives them the true American cattle. Okay. How old are these two? Uh, she's going to be probably 16 years of age and she's going to be retired this year. She, she's had her last calf and we're going to put her in the retirement pasture. He's coming three. He'll be three in, in March. And he's a big growing boy right now. He's grown over 17 inches just on one side of horn this year. So you can see the difference uh, right there in his on his horn, right? Where, and where it was last year. Yes, that was last year at this time. This Only this much of his horn was sticking out last year. Sorry about that. I know you don't <laughs> like your horns touch. And so he's grown this much. On one side. Just in one side. 34 inches total. And so that's, and you get that little, you said that, that ring. It's a little growth, like growth ring. ring, yes. Because the, the fee's not as good and everything. Yes. It's kind of a dormant period, right? Yes. Okay. So right. what's the largest you've ever raised? The well, largest I've ever raised uh -huh. was over 11 feet. In horn span. His name is Wow. <laughs> Appropriately. Wow. Okay, so that seems like it would be very awkward as they try and get around, but you said, because we were talking about mm -hmm. you're loading up about 75 head coming for the uh, Western Heritage Braden Cattle Drive yes. on Saturday, but they can get around through tight quarters, right? As long as they can get their hips and their shoulders through a chute, they can maneuver their horns by turning their head and they can go straight. So, single file. So, loading them up. Yes, on on Saturday morning. Yes, ma'am. Get care very carefully. Twenty five head, <laughs> one at a time at five o'clock in the morning. Yes, ma'am. Because you said they don't like being in the dark like that either. They don't like to be in the dark. Spaces. They don't like to be in enclosed in areas. So we have to put lights in the trailers and around to show them that it's okay to get up in a dark trail. Ah. That that's fascinating. Yes. And they can just and you said they know where the tips of their they know exactly are where the tips are. Yes, to where they can scratch a. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He, he agrees. <laughs> to he where agrees. they can scratch a tick on their back, right? Yes, they can. Wow. And their horns and their hooves are same, same material, yes, made out of same material, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Same material. Mm -hmm. And their horns are also, uh, unlike antlers on other like deer or something like that, these things are alive, if you will. Yes. Or at least a good portion of them. Yes. They, they, they grow all their, all their years that they live. Their biggest time that they grow the length is up to five years of age. But if you, Mike, if you put your hand on that, you can kind of slide out, kind of feel how warm they are there, yeah, and then she kind of gets cold at the end. Okay, so there's blood and everything right there. Right here, and you get up higher here. Mm -hmm. It's still a little warm. Right there. This is probably dead horn. Okay. She's still got blood in here, all the way through. So, and this is basically since she's 16, how long her horns are going to be getting? Yes. No longer than that. So. Yes. All right. She'll slow down to probably an inch and a half a year. And so, does it does it slow down on, during the timing, depending on the time of year also? Time of the year also, but most of the time age. When okay. they get past the age of six, they'll decrease. 
He's doing right about two and a half inches a month right now in his horn growth. She's yeah, right doing here. probably about an eighth of an inch a month in her horn growth. He is a growing boy, isn't he? <laughs> and you're going to have, like we said, hopefully. Uh -huh. 75, 75 head if they get in the trailer. What's that feel like, having them go down Houston Street like that, like it used to happen 100 years ago? A lot of work, obviously. <laughs> Pretty cool. Especially when you get to see the Alamo yeah. with the long horns. Right. It's pretty emotional. To be well, able thank to you. keep that tradition it's, going. It's historic. Yes. Well, thank well, you so much, Dr. Scott Kimball. Appreciate it, McKenna. Mm -hmm. And you can get up close by going out to the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, brought to you by the all-new 2020 Silverado HD. It's a free event. The parade route runs through the streets of downtown. If you can't make it out this Saturday, tune into KSAT to watch the parade. And we, of course, will be hosting. And if you do come down, this is our first year for the KSAT Corral Hoedown. This experience includes a hearty chuck wagon breakfast, parade route seating, and activities, too. Head to ksat.com for ticket information. And a lot of faces you see on TV are going to be at that KSAT Corral. So take some pictures, shake some hands, and watch these 75 head of Longhorn Cattle and all the other folks. Yes. Right on cue. Yes. I, that's why we like working with this Longhorn every year. Hey, it is a thirsty Thursday. Are you thirsty, sweetie? He wants you to move One on more. over. Uh, yes. not going okay. to do it for me. Today, we give you a worldly experience in a new downtown hotspot called Jet Setter. Yes. Each craft cocktail is inspired by a different country or region, giving you a truly unique experience. We take you there. Take a look. Jet Setter being what we like to call an international style cocktail bar where we pull flavors, we pull ideas, we pull techniques, even down to the glassware to kind of put it all together and transport uh, guests that live here in San Antonio to other parts of the world. They care so much about this worldly experience that they invited one of Asia's top 50 bars to partner for a night. Here's a taste of the menu from the Pontiac Bar. Hi guys, this is Beckley from the Pontiac in Hong Kong. First of all, we're going to use some delicious Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, 45 ml, 23 ml lemon juice, 15 ml amaretto, 10 ml Zucca, which is a rhubarb amaro. Then we take a little bit of our house bangering syrup, and last but never least, a little egg white. Dry shake, then wet shake. Give it a nice clean double strain. All right, to finish it off, some nice fresh lemon oil. Give it a really beautiful citrusy aromatic. And after all, San Antonio, snake in my boots. So first I'm gonna make you um, our signature hot now. This is fantastic, because it's got a little bit of a ginger syrup to start with. To make it a little bit more refreshing note, we have the lemon juice. Top it off with one of my favorite, favorite little modifier amaro. We got a burner. To top it off, and to end things, we have rye Jack Daniels. Moving on to shaking. You will see why these cocktails are so beautiful and so popular in Pontiac. Look at that beautiful color. The ginger syrup is really sharp. Um, it's got a little spice into it. But the whole thing itself is quite sweet and sour. And we're just gonna have a little bit of orange oil to add a beautiful and rounded aroma and place things together. Having San Antonio inviting us is definitely a huge, huge milestone for us. This is a great time to put San Antonio in the spotlight uh, and to bring someone from overseas. Uh, it just is uh, something incredible. Today we're gonna be making the Kowloon Station. The components of the Kowloon Station are two parts of sake, one part of a mango cordial that we make here at Jet Setter, one part of rice milk that we also make here in Jet Setter. So uh, I took a trip to Hong Kong a couple years back and inside Kowloon Station, I had a very common uh, form of breakfast or dessert called mango and sticky rice and loved it. Found over the flavors, wanted to replicate the flavors, which we have done here today. But the technique and how we make the cocktail, we use a hand immersion blender. This is to emulsify the cocktail at a much quicker uh, pace. 
There we go. And then a little sesame seed, just like you would have at your mango and sticky rice. And we want to get people excited. We want them to go back out. And we want to give them a reason to come downtown. We want to give people a reason to come to San Antonio. A wise person once told me when I was in Hong Kong uh, that piranhas don't attack each other, which I really took that to heart. The, the main goal is we get everyone to San Antonio. And we're all on that same goal. And that's every bar and restaurant that opens or has already been open or is going to open or is open now. Uh, that is the goal. Cheers to that. Hong Kong's Pontiac Bar may be the first to partner, but Jet Setter hopes to land more of these international experiences to give the Alamo City a taste of more culture. Who knows what country is next? Still ahead on the show, one of the biggest alligator snapping turtles lives right here in Texas. Boy, that thing's ugly. We'll tell you which <laughs> Texas town is being featured on a new animal series. And right after the break, prepping for the Big Sunday Showdown, how you can enjoy the game day grub and stick to your diet, what you need to do right before you head to that party. Showdown between Chiefs and 49ers, of course, is coming up on Sunday, and you may be wondering how you can enjoy the day while still trying to be a little bit on the healthy side. Yes, and here to help us out is Anthony Pierre from Lifetime San Antonio. You have got some great ideas on how to stay healthy on game day. Tell us how, because it yes. starts before you even head to the party, right? Yes, just like in actual sports, Success is won or lost on or off the field. So we're off the field right now. We're getting ready to go on. Free game. So <laughs> when you think about what you're going to do first, eat something before you go wherever you're going to go. The biggest mistake that people make is they decide that I'm not going to eat. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out really hard. I'm so not. you're 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 kind of gaining if mm -hmm. you. But that's what people think. But that's not what they think. Really, right? Yeah, because it's actually setting them back. Because the first thing they do when they get there is they start smelling the food. They start mm. feeling like, hey, there's a lot of good stuff here that I haven't had in a while. Beginning of the year just happened, we set those goals, we set those, those milestones that we want to reach. So we've been depriving ourselves of all the things that we've wanted to have. And now we're in front of all those things that we really want to have, and well, guess what's going to happen? Yes. Hey, Inevitably. Plus you're going to be like, well, I yeah. worked out earlier, I deserve yeah, exactly. it. I've been doing well and since the beginning of the year. You said it's not just <laughs> your mind going, ooh, I want more yeah. chicken wings or something. It's actually your body then yeah. craving it more so. It's your actual physiology. So the way the body works is we're built to seek out food. And yeah, where we are. we are nowadays, we have food all around. I mean, literally, food all around us. So if you don't have enough food present, your body goes, hey, find me some food, get me some food. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you're put in front of all those foods that you really, really want, that are really calorie dense. Okay. And your brain goes, hey, I want those. And your brain's going to win every time. But you also said don't deprive yourself, but maybe mm -hmm. add in some of this good stuff, yeah, right? Okay. Of course. Add in some veggies before you go. Right. Um, one thing you could always do is very simple. Mm -hmm. Get some nuts, mix mm -hmm. them together. You can always pick out the nuts that you like. So we've got macadamia nuts, we've got almonds, we've got cashews, and we've got regular walnuts. Just throw them all together. Yeah, just throw them all in there. Um, and the big thing with like nut mixes is you're always going to have those nuts that you don't really like. So if you make your own nut mix, you're going to be a lot better off because yeah. all the nuts that are in there are ones you like. Also, a lot of people are like, you know, oh, no salt, you know, the, mm -hmm. the sodium is bad for you and everything like that. But you said, yeah, mm, not, not really. Not really. So to an extent. So when people work out, they're actually burning through salt. And the recommended amount of salt per day is somewhere between 1,500 milligrams and 2,000 milligrams. In the average workout, you lose between 1,500 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams. Mm -hmm. So in a situation like this, you're going into all these salty foods without having any salt in your system. Your body uses salt for everything. The fact that you're listening to what I'm saying right now is actually consuming salt out of your system. I'm going to listen harder. Yeah. <laughs> and then you melt right off. So, so if you were to, uh, you know, potato chips, mm -hmm. right? Salty. Yeah. Okay. Or here we go. We're going to take some cucumbers, cucumbers okay. put a little sea salt on it, oh. and it's going to make a better alternative than going face down on the chips. Not saying not to have the chips, right. but this will buffer you from having as many because you're going to get some of that salt going in already. Your body's going to get a little bit the same crunch. So in a way, it's kind of like the, the child that, that doesn't get any sweets or any candy. Once they get them, they just gorge yes. with that, right? Yeah. And it's great that you mean that. My daughter will, like, you can put a pile of candy in front of her because we let her have it every now and then. Not and she'll just have one or two. And okay. she walks away. And same thing your body will do with the salt then. So. Exactly. You have and, a little bit. And some of the good veggies to, to have, I mean, you get all the, the good fiber mm -hmm. and crunch and everything like that, which would go along with the chicken wings. Yeah. Okay. Well, and notoriously, when you get chicken wings, they come with celery. The celery is always left 
in that corner over there because it doesn't have the same salt behind it. It doesn't have that same drive that you would get from having the chicken wing, which has a lot more flavor, a lot more texture that you want to have. And plus, by putting mm -hmm. a little bit of salt on there, it's going to enhance and make your tongue kind of lighten up a little bit more. So, hey, the, yeah. sub, the cucumber's not as bad and, oh, and yeah. bland as the, you know, replacement for the chicken wing. Yeah, and that's where a lot of people go wrong because they think of healthy eating as bland eating. Right. It doesn't have to be bland. Right. Season it up, have some fun with it, make it lively. If you don't make it lively, well, then you're going to binge. You're going to do bad things. So you can bring something right. like this vegetable tray to the party and people won't throw things at you. Correct, <laughs> yeah. And, and make sure it's not the one thing that's left in the corner by itself. Right, right. Thank you very much, Anthony. And for more information on Lifetime San Antonio, head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, later in the show. Counting down to the big game, find out how you can win a signed Drew Brees jersey. And next, talk about good game day food. It's an Elder Eats and David finds a big burrito in town that you might want for your next game. is a food truck in San Antonio making incredible Mexican street food. Their popular item on the menu, birria and carnitas quesi tacos. And now they have a couple new items on the menu, like their birria burrito. They're packing this burrito right here full of everything delicious that you love about the food that they serve up. Plus, you have the consomme on the side. This is that juice that you want to dip all of that in. I'm going to give it a try. You got some hot sauce on the side, some limes. Look at that. This is what's up. There's only a handful of places in San Antonio in this area that you can even get this. This is one of them, and this is probably the best place you can come out to to get it. So here's what you do. You get your consomme, you get your burrito or your taco. I'm using the burrito for this one. You dip it right in there, and then check that out. It's just dripping. Here we go. Oh. Wow. It's, a, it's spicy, but it's got that broth, salty goodness to it. The burrito has the refried beans, the steak, cilantro, rice, cheese, and then it has that nice sear on the outside, so then you put it on the flat top. And then consomme, it's spicy, it's brothy. It's got that salty goodness to it. This is the acid, the salt, and the fat that you want when you're thinking of some delicious, savory food. I'm, a, I'm going in for round two. And look at that, cheese just coming out the side. All right, I'm dipping this one in. If you want comfort food, you get the consomme, you get the burrito. This is your meal right here. Check that out. <laughs> Another new item on the menu, birria ramen. If you love ramen and you love birria tacos, well, you gotta try the birria burritos, of course, right? But they have a ramen birria blend that they're putting together out here. It's using the tapatio base. So you're already getting the great flavors that you love from this kind of ramen. Now it's mixed up with their birria meat. This looks incredible. Y'all, if you do not try this ramen, you're doing something wrong because <laughs> it's absolutely rocking. Oh my gosh, I want this at 1.45 in the morning after a long night of drinking. This is what I want to eat. I've never had something with so much broth, salty, unctuous fat and salt flavor all mixed together like this. This is what's up. I'm gonna keep eating this. This is like adult SpaghettiOs. You guys gotta come out to El Remedio Food Truck. This place is phenomenal. I've been out here to talk about their tacos and their quesadillas and their ceviche, but now they have ramen and they have burritos on the menu as well. They're always introducing something new. Look out for them, because you never know what they're gonna be making out here. But check this out. I'm gonna get the burrito and I'm gonna put it in my ramen, because that's how I roll. I'm gonna mix in the two together. That's what's up. Absolutely phenomenal, you guys. This is where it's at. Catch up on past Elder Eats and get a map of all the places I've been to for Elder Eats by heading to eldereats.com. Keep eating San Antonio and for SA Live, I'm David Elder. Still ahead, we're hearing from animal expert and adventurer Coyote Peterson. Find out which Texas down he's featuring on his new series. Next on SA Live, Charo and Baracho Beans, these sisters claim to make the best in town. A preview of the Vaquero Cook-Off right after the break. A 
tradition of cooking passed down through family recipes. The Yasso sisters have learned all about food and family and also giving back to their community thanks to their parents. The two of them will join together this year for the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. But Carol cook off to show off their skills and the reason why they're joining together this year is because last year... Yes, Sandra and Rachel here were not on the same team. Hmm. Why yes. did you join forces? I think after the awards went through, we realized, and, and I did say before, we should be on the same team, but I also respected her independence, <laughs> um, <laughs> trial by error, you know, oh, live and okay. learn. Okay. Okay. We placed uh, first or second in every category. So coming to our senses, joining forces, <laughs> collaborating. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I think we'll be a little more successful than we were last yes. year. And, right. they, and they also set off camera that mom gave them a stern talking to <laughs> as well. So yeah, we're going to try and recruit more people for this as we go up against the, the gauntlet here. So uh, you're in all the different categories, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What do you, uh, what's one of the categories that you're doing, uh, So Tamara? today I'm going to show you uh, chili con carne. So we have a combination of uh, cubed beef, ground beef, and some ground pork. Oh, right? okay. And then what do you add to it? Uh, so then I'm going to add a combination of uh, cumin and oregano, mm -hmm. uh, chili powder, paprika, and uh, diced tomatoes and chilies. And this is the secret family recipe? It's, or it's a recipe I've been perfecting probably since 2005. Now, and chili con carne beans or no beans? It depends. So uh -huh. I make it both ways. For the cook-off, no, no beans. beans. Okay. No beans. That's okay. our, our choice. Okay. For the cook-off, no beans. All right. Right. And Rachel, what are you making? I'm doing chowder beans. Okay. And there are there's rules, right, at, at the cook-off as far as how, how you cook something? Well, everything we have to cook is on propane. Okay. So here is not the way it will be, but right. there at Hemisphere, it's all cooked on propane. Everything. No electricity, nothing, mm -hmm. just propane. Okay. okay. The old-fashioned way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, yes. So the chato beans, we do cilantro, there's tomato, onions, garlic powder, onion powder, some special seasonings, jalapenos, and of course bacon, one of the secret ingredients too, and good those flavor. Are two of the, the meals that you're cooking, the dishes you're cooking, what are the other ones? So the other ones are carne guisada, yes. menudo, and the show, uh, chef's, chef's choice. choice. And this year our team has chosen to do mole. mole. Ooh. That sounds right. good. Mm -hmm. And just the two of you or more on the oh, team? Oh, no, we have, we a, have, we have a team. team. Okay. So uh, there's a chef on uh, that's responsible for each one of our dishes. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, since you guys are on the same team this year, you know, and not competing against each other, we want to kind of help get you ready. Okay. And since, of course, Sunday's showdown is happening, right. you know, out there on the big field, how about a sister's showdown today? So we've got five questions for each of you. You're going to answer each question about each other and then hold it up okay I'll tell you when I'll tell you when to hold it up we're gonna see if you, if you guys get these uh, these answers right about each other all right the right. first question get ready to write is who is the tidiest hold them up Let's all see. right answers in three two oh. and one it says <laughs> Sandra is, is the she, tiniest. So, Sandra, She's not okay. the tiniest. All right. That's, that's great. You guys next got one. it right. The next one. Okay, get ready. Is who is most likely to deal with a spider? All right, answers in three, two, one. Go. She is. Rachel here is. Yes. Oh. oh she got it right. I am the protector. Okay. <laughs> All right. What celebrity would you want to be stuck with? Would she want to be stuck with on a desert island? <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Answers in uh, three, the sisters two, have grown one. up together. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, next question. Here we go. If you could only, if she could only eat one food for the rest of her life, what would it be? One food for the rest of her life, what would it be? These barracho beans are pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. All that. right, here we go. Answers in three, two, one. Rachel says Sanders says chicken wings, and you say nachos. Is that correct? That's correct. That's okay. <laughs> Last question. Here we go. Who is the best cook? Ooh, this is going to be good. Now they come forces. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, and answers. Aw. Aw, they said each other. I love it. 
cook this up. I think you guys are completely ready. Ready for the cook-off. These barracho beans, the little bit of bacon in there adds all, all the difference the in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you still have time, of course, to register for the Vaquero cook-off. It's another part of the huge kickoff to the rodeo. Teams are competing to see who makes the best chili con carne, charro beans, carne guisada, or menudo. If you want to register, just go to SA Live. Uh, I'm sorry, just go to sarodeo.com slash vaquero. And this is not just a, a cook-off there. There's a lot of entertainment as well. Friday, a lot of entertainment. And featured uh, entertainer is Gabe Garcia. And then on Saturday, entertainment throughout most of the day. And it is topping off with La Tropa F.A. So, again, that's Friday and Saturday. And, of course, that's all part of the big Western Heritage celebration. Ladies, best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to all the other competitors out there because they are tough. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, next on the show, ready to dive into an animal adventure? We're getting up close with the Texas giant and learning some animal facts from animal expert Coyote Peterson. with wild animals wait let me paint a better picture for you how about jumping into murky water to catch an alligator snapping turtle who does that coyote peterson animal expert and adventurer that's who his youtube channel brave wilderness has over 15 million subscribers such a pleasure to chat with you today about your new adventure coyote how are you I'm fantastic, Jen. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, first of all, my kids are proud to say that they're part of the Coyote Pack. That is very exciting. Please tell them thank you for being such brave members of the pack. Um, and, and everybody who watches our content is, is considered a member of the Coyote Pack. If we're getting kids of all ages, three to 93 excited about animals, we're doing the right job. Because I know that you get up close, you're not scared at all. <laughs> uh, to get up close with these animals, most people would say, he's crazy. How, how can you get so close? Where does it come from? You're obviously very passionate. Um, well, what's, what's amazing is, is it's snapping turtles. And I'm, I'm very excited for everybody there in Texas because our premiere episode, a large part of it actually takes place in Cleveland, Texas, where I caught the largest alligator snapping turtle I think that has ever been featured on camera. An absolute giant. This thing is a living dinosaur. Um, you know, they say everything is bigger in Texas, and that is definitely <laughs> the case. Um, but it was snapping turtles that started my love for um, this journey that became teaching the world about bizarre creatures. Most people don't recognize or realize what a snapping turtle is, whether it's a common snapping turtle or an alligator snapping turtle, but both of these animals deserve their time in front of the spotlight. I did get a sneak peek and I did get to learn a little bit more about them thanks to you. So thank you for all you do. If it's okay with you, I had my daughter record a question. If you want to listen for it, she's going to ask it. Hi, Katie. I'm your biggest fan. I have a bunch of pets. I want to ask you a question. How furry is a koala? Thank you for the wonderful question, Julia. Koalas are incredibly soft, but here's something you probably didn't know. They smell like cheese. <laughs> they may be adorable, but they are not the best smelling marsupial on the face of the planet. The males actually have this little scent gland on their chest that they will like rub up on the, the bark of trees. A koala is one of the stinkier creatures that you can ever work with, but <laughs> what they, they have in sync, they definitely balance out with their adorable nature. I did not know that. Well, thanks for sharing. And what is the scariest encounter that you've ever had? Uh, probably one with grizzly bears on the side of a river in Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually put into that same scenario that you saw in that film, The Revenant, with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, a mother bear, her three cubs, 100 yards in closing, and fortunately we were able to scare the bears off and were not attacked. But it was without question the scariest animal encounter I've ever had because if a mother bear decides she's going to defend her cubs, trust me, you're not going to be able to get away. <laughs> wow. I, I don't know how you do that. Speaking of scary, I know you've been bit, you've been stung. My son Rai Rai has a question for you. H Hello, Kylie Houston. My name is Rai Rai. What animal bite was the most painful? I would only say about 2% of the content we've produced is the bite and sting content, where I'm intentionally bitten or stung by something to show you the effects of the bite or the venom. Um, obviously, this is a content that people have found very fascinating. It still has quite the educational spin on it. But when it comes to the most painful bite I've ever taken, it was actually an accidental bite from the only venomous lizard in the United States, which is called the Gila Monster. And that simply happened 
happened by getting a camera too close. It latched onto my thumb, and let's just say that was the most painful day oh. I've ever had to endure. My goodness. Okay. Well, we love going along on your adventures. Let's talk about your new show on Animal Planet. So, Coyote mm -hmm. Peterson, Brave the Wild. Uh, this show is just fun, right? So, if you've seen the, the YouTube content, you know it's fast paced. We get you into the environment, we get you up close with the animals. But, Brave the Wild is a longer form narrative, right? We're telling 30 minute to hour long episodes, and there's so many animals packed into each and every single episode, right? 79 animals featured within the first season, and every single adventure feels like I'm literally grabbing you by the hand, taking you with me off into the wilderness, and you never know what's gonna happen next. So when I say it's fun, I promise it's gonna deliver for kids of all ages. Doesn't matter if you're three years old, or you're an adult, or you're 93 years old, this is the show for you if you love animals and adventure. Thank you, Coyote, for being such an inspiration to everyone, all the animal lovers like myself, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Hey, coming up next, how you can win this. That is an authentic Drew Brees signed jersey. We have all the details coming up. The 100 Club of San Antonio has been a comfort and a support system for the families of our first responders, our law enforcement officers, and our firefighters who put their lives on the line every day for our community. And you can help out the 100 Club of San Antonio by getting your 2020 decal. Visit 100clubofsa.org slash donate, make a donation, get your decal, and show it proudly. This year, give a little to the men and women who give us their all. KSAT Community, in partnership with the University Health System and Energy Transfer Partners. Come on, seriously. <laughs> really? Ladies and gentlemen, the moment Look you've all been form. waiting Look for. At that speed. This they is footage of one of the greatest athletes to ever play the game. That's right, that is Mike Silva Fox, Oscar Hage. Perfect form, uncatchable speed. <laughs> Until Not I pull quite a hamstring making there. So. It. <laughs> <laughs> they had to slow that video down. I was going to That still so is fast. impressive, you know. Yeah. It, it's, it's impressive. I'm, that I, is? Yeah, that something worse didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> You're right, though. <laughs> oh, you, okay, all right. She's speaking okay. the truth. So the 49ers, of course, uh, and the Chiefs game, of course, is on Sunday, and we want to know how well do you know your NFL mascot? So we're going to put Mike to the test here, and you can, of course, play along at home because we're going to quiz him by putting the name of the mascot on the screen, and then he's got to guess which NFL team it belongs to, okay? Kind of, kind of like with the San Antonio Spurs, but the mascot is mm -hmm. the Coyote. Right. And lot, I don't know if all teams have mascots or not. Okay, so, that's not I don't know. one we'll of see. the. That's not I'm, one what, of the. Right. Okay. The answer. I'm just saying. Okay, because that would be really easy. All right, here you go. Rory, does Rory belong to the LA Rams, Cincinnati Bengals, Detroit Lions, or Ooh. the Carolina Panthers? I'm gonna go with my team, Lions. You made that one really, I know. really easy for you. We want you to get your confidence. <laughs> Thank up you right very here. much. Okay, okay, after showing after that, that video. After that video, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Bo, oh, the Jets, Bills, Giants, or the Ravens? I'll say Ravens, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That made sense. Good thing I paid attention in English class. Come on, you guys. He knows all this trivia. No, okay. this <laughs> all right, here we go. Swoop, the Chargers, Eagles, Jets, or the Raiders? I'll say swoop like a bird, so Eagles. You! Yeah. Oh, did, did, you saw, did you see these? I before? did not see them. Are I, you I, sure? I did not because see them. Because I, I left never, my script. I left these right there. Did you? I, I have never. I've when never. I went heard, over here to the dressing no. room. I know, right? I think he. I, think I he didn't. Did. Look. Well, they kind of make sense. Mm. All right, here we go. Rowdy, Giants, Cowboys, Chargers, or Texans. I have a strange suspicion. Mm. It's the team from. Up I-35 from here, the Dallas Cowboys. Is that your final oh, well. <laughs> The bell, the bell got, the bell, the bell beat me to it. Okay. All right, now, Gumbo, 49ers, Packers, Saints, or Colts? Okay, this is kind of, I mean, Saints, Gumbo. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Am I five for five? Yeah, you, you were. Wow. I think you saw these. I did not. I swear <laughs> to goodness, I did not. So, hey. 
All right. Speaking of the Saints, if you go to SALive.com, you can enter to win a signed Drew Brees jersey. Drew Brees, of course, is from Texas, has broken all kinds of NFL records, including most career touchdown passes, and he is a future Hall of Famer. Now, once again, enter to win a signed Drew Brees jersey. This one right here mm -hmm. on SALive.com. See, Arguably, not only signed by Drew Brees, but it's now as seen on SA Live and held by Mike Osterhage. And Fiona, so it makes it even that much more valuable. <laughs> all right, tomorrow Tags on all. SA Live, you know him from The Office, Hot Tub, Time Machine, even This is the End. All right, actor, comedian Craig Robinson will be here. We'll tell you where you can see him this weekend. And the Vaquero Cook-Off kicks off tomorrow. We will be live downtown to preview the competition, show what's cooking and how you can get in on the tasting. That's tomorrow at 1. Don't forget, everybody, you can vote for your favorite from the 2020 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Just make sure, by the way, that is brought to you by the 2020 Silverado HD. Yes, okay. And, of course, we are enjoying, right? Yep, yep here we go. Yep. Uh, for, for the Vaquero, Vaquero Cook-Off, cook which you can still register for. I've got the chili con carne here, of course. Mm. It's from the Yasso sister, sisters, Sandra and, and Rachel. And today is the last day to register mm -hmm. for that Vaquero Cook-Off, okay? Because that begins, and, <clears throat> excuse me, tomorrow. I went down the wrong pipe. I've got okay. tomorrow and um, also on Saturday. And look what La Panaderia gave Dropped off for us, yes, okay. Their signature almond croissant, because today is National Croissant. Day. Oh, these are just delectable. I've already had